Too often, for black and brown women, we experience the healthcare system as broken, unwelcoming, and not created or equipped to center us and our needs. In the healthcare space, racism and implicit bias play a key role in the exacerbation of adverse maternal health disparities. 63% of all maternal deaths and 90% of maternal deaths due to hemorrhage are preventable. In the United States, our rates are actually getting worse for maternal mortality, despite advancements in medicine. How did we get here? Before we get into the why and the how, let me share some joy first. My husband and I got pregnant in 2018 with our first child, a boy, Ehatrisi, which in Igbo means light of God. We were overjoyed to be expecting. During the pregnancy, I focused heavily on self-care and not the adverse maternal health statistics as experienced by black women. I was determined to celebrate the beauty of my pregnancy. However, I was snapped out of my place of peace when I walked onto the labor floor at the start of my delivery. I clearly remember walking past the nursing station with my mother and my husband and not being greeted by anyone. In October 2021, when I was in labor with my second child, same hospital, I had a completely different birthing experience. What was the main difference? The nurses. In the first delivery, the nursing staff was cold, unwelcoming, and uninterested in my care. In the second delivery, the nursing staff was warm and accommodating. Now, on top of everything that happens in the labor process, the nurse made it a priority to listen to me. She developed a rapport with my family. She allowed my doula to be in the space, but most importantly, she gave me peace of mind. Now, I'm thankful that today, myself and both of my children are healthy. But we know from many black mothers, this is not always the case. I grew up in Trenton, New Jersey, the capital of the state, and a city long neglected. We had metal detectors in my high school, and students from Trenton were seen as having a bad reputation. In my neighborhood, selling drugs, going to jail, and being shot at by police happened more often than I would have liked. I've lost many friends to the streets, jail, and premature death. Born to Nigerian immigrants, in my household, education was seen as the way out. My three brothers and both my parents have degrees, with many of us having masters or doctorates. During high school, I experienced the loss of a dear friend who was really more like a sister to me. She passed away after her delivery from complications of lupus. Lupus is a chronic disease that can cause pain and inflammation anywhere in the body. It's also an autoimmune disease, which means that the immune system, which is meant to fight infection, actually attacks healthy cells instead. Losing a friend at the age of 16 was very shocking and tragic to me, but it would later awaken the passion I would have for addressing health disparities. After completing my master's in public health, and my PhD in maternal and child health, I did a two-year fellowship in Baltimore focused on community-based research and reducing health disparities. During the course of this postdoctoral fellowship, I had the pleasure of working alongside a brilliant scholar who only a few short years after the fellowship was over made national attention for yet another preventable and tragic death of a young black mother. Losing a friend of mine again this time in my adult life, jarred me back to the harsh realities of racism in the healthcare system. I am still mourning the loss of both of these friends who should both still be here today to raise their children. Now we know that black women are 243% more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications. Preeclampsia, a serious condition of hypertension that can occur during and after pregnancy is higher in black and brown women. 
My research team and I are working hard to identify women at most risk while finding solutions to address this. But it doesn't have to and shouldn't be this way. Let's take, for instance, the case of Serena Williams, a global tennis superstar. After her delivery of her daughter, Serena informed her nurse that she was having chest pains. Her nurse dismissed her and told her to go and lay down. But Serena persisted. This persistence saved her life. She was developing a blood clot in her lungs that could have killed her. What a stain that would have been on the fabric of this country to lose a global superstar athlete like Serena. Even with her celebrity status, her access and her resources, she was still ignored and dismissed because she was a black woman navigating a racist healthcare system. We see this play out in the data as well. In a national survey, the Listening to Mothers survey, 11% of black women reported being mistreated because of their race or ethnicity. Out of pain, opportunity is born. And in July 2020, at the height of the pandemic, I started the largest maternal health research lab in the country, dedicated to training the next generation of maternal health scholar activists. The Maternal Outcomes for Translational Health Equity Research, or Mother Lab for short, has an amazing mission. The mission of the Mother Lab is to address and eradicate inequities black women face through research, advocacy, and mentorship. This is done by confronting and dismantling the systems that perpetuate racism for black women who give birth. The vision of the Mother Lab is to create a world where all black birthing people who choose to become mothers receive access to the same high caliber resources as others without their concerns being ignored or dismissed. We are creating a world where black women do not face maternal health complications due to racism or other isms throughout their lives and throughout their pregnancies. Here at the Mother Lab, we are more committed than ever to furthering our cause in a reproductive justice framework. Some of the many accomplishments of my 35-person lab include hosting a national conference for black maternal health every year, receiving grants to further our work, creating structured research opportunities for students, and developing community-focused events. In addition to my work at the Mother Lab, my amazing research team and I are focused on two key areas of maternal health, maternal safety bundles and the role of doulas. Maternal safety bundles are focused on pre preventing and treating hemorrhage, hypertension, and reducing racism in a clinical encounter. Doulas are trained professionals that provide care during birth and postpartum. We know that people that have used doulas are less likely to have a C-section, more likely to breastfeed, and report higher overall rates of better health. The urgency of this work cannot be overstated. The findings from this research will be used to train the next generation of health leadership, hospital staff, clinicians, nurses, midwives. Anybody interacting with the patient in the birthing process can be trained to implement life-saving procedures related to reducing excessive bleeding, treating hypertension, and addressing racism. Addressing these microaggressions as they occur can literally be the difference between life or death. For example, a delay in notifying the appropriate staff when a patient's blood pressure starts to skyrocket in delivery could be extremely dangerous. I stand with and for black birthing people, their families, and providers that are working to empower communities to receive the care they deserve. On a social justice lens, we are in the process of creating a freestanding birthing center here in Boston. Boston needs a birth center. We are working hard to open our doors next year to provide options other than a hospital or home birth. When it comes to addressing the riskiness, 
and navigating care that black birthing people face, we are overdue in the race for solutions. That's why I am in the process of creating the first ever National Center for Black Maternal Health and Reproductive Justice here at Tufts University in the School of Medicine. This national center will serve as a hub for community research and policy to address maternal health. Look, the healthcare system is broken and not particularly safe or welcoming to black and brown people, but through dedicated advocacy, we can address this. So whether or not you're familiar with my work, the work that will come out of the center, or even the topic of maternal health disparities, you can make a difference. But most importantly, you can contribute to the centering of the voices of black birthing people. Now we all need to remember that being a kind human being can go a long way. Remember how that one nurse had the ability to change my birthing experience with her compassion and her warmth? We all have the ability to make a difference by calling out racism and standing up for what is right. Thank you.